So now we want to go through the process of refining these weights. So to do that, we'll make sure that we have the character selected. So with basically make sure that we have the skin, the item with the skin cluster node attached. We'll come over to skeleton. We'll go to edit smooth skin. We'll click this two line menu bar just to kind of tear this off since we'll be using this a lot. And then we'll come here and we'll just click the paint skin weights tool. And so here I'll just double click the tool to make sure that our tool settings are open and then we can go through the process of using this tool to paint weights. We can also select components and assign weighting values manually as well. So here underneath our mode, let's go ahead and just make sure that we're in the paint mode and you can see that uh, we have our head selected. So if we want to select uh, any influences for these joints, we can either go through this hierarchy here and select it or you can just mouse over the joint uh, hold down the shift key and then here you'll get a marking menu and we can just select uh, or swipe upwards to select influence and then you can see that we can really easily just select the influences for that given joint that we can use to uh, you know paint or fine tune so let's just go back to our head and make sure we select influence and now we can see the weights that are applied to this head let's go ahead to the top of our perspective view and turn off light so we can really get uh, a better look at how these weights are working and so what we want to do is just check the weighting value. This looks pretty good. Uh, if we click this eyedropper tool and we just click here on the mesh, you can see that it will output for us the value. So here we're about 9.67% uh, weighted. Uh, so it's not quite at one, but you know, close enough that we would get a pretty good uh, deformation. But uh, let's just go ahead and show you uh, that we could actually just pull this guy here all the way up to one. Uh, we've got this brush system here. We can hold down B to change our brush size. And then we can just start to just paint uh, value in here. So for instance, if I just pulled this all the way down to uh, you know value to like 0.2 or so, you can see as I paint, I'm just interactively painting this weight value here. So then we'll pull this all the way back up to one. Like I said, it's almost at one, so it's kind of hard to tell you know what we're actually painting. But in this case, uh, I'm going to go through and just uh, you know show you how I actually use this tool. Uh, I use the I don't really rely so much on the painting, uh, mainly when it comes to just smoothing. Uh, what I like to do is just make the selections uh, for these joints themselves. So what I'll do is come over here to my mode and I'll go into select mode. And with that in select mode, I can actually select some components that I want to work with. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to right click and come over here to vertex. And uh, I'm going to come over here to my selection mask and I'm going to turn off joints. Now, if you don't see this menu option, you can actually collapse it. So just uh, you might want to just uncollapse it or make sure that it's open. I'm going to turn joints off so I don't actually select any joints. And uh, let's just go into, like, say, a right view. And uh, what we'll do is grab our lasso selection tool. And then let's just go ahead and just make a quick selection here of all the vertices that encompass the head. And so now we have these vertices selected. So here I'll just go back into my paint weights tool. When I went into vertex mode, I deselected the paint weights tool. I didn't actually need to go into vertex mode because that mode or vertex mode selection is enabled by default when we actually go into that select mode from the paint weights tool. So in this case, I just need to reactivate the tool. Go back into uh, my paint mode here, and then with these vertices selected, I'll make sure that my value slider is at one, and I'll just hit flood. And that's just going to flood all of those vertices with a weight value of one. Now we're in the paint mode. I will click the select geometry button, and then I'll go ahead and just start to decrease my brush size. And now I'll just hold down the shift key in here. Let's go back into our perspective view. Now I'll just hold down the shift key, and I'll just smooth these weights here. So make sure that they're, you know, we don't have such a hard line here. I'll just kind of smooth some of these weights in this place. And that's how I basically use the paint settings. I really just use it to kind of just feather the weighting around the neck here. Now we'll want to test out how this is going to work or how our weighting is. So I can just mouse over the joint and I can just middle mouse click. And then I can actually just start to rotate on these axes. So let's go ahead and just kind of rotate this neck here just a bit. And again, just holding down middle mouse click, we'll just kind of take a look at how this is doing. And so once that's done, or once I have basically a little bit of articulation there, we'll go and we'll select geometry and go back. And now you can see that I can start to, uh, you know, adjust these weights here. Now, there is a very powerful tool called the weight hammer that I like to use next in these situations. So if we kind of just... Uh, here, let's just look at this kind of edge loop right in here. And uh, I want to be able just to fix that. So, you know, you can really see some uh, pretty bad uh, deformation in this area. So here I'll go into my select mode. Uh, in this case, I'll swipe up to go to edge. And I'm just going to double click this edge here. So this is the edge that I actually want to fix. 
And so all I gotta do is just come over here and just click the weight hammer tool. And you can see that the weight hammer uh, basically just uh, kind of bangs out the kinks and the vertices, so to speak, and uh, just really interpolates uh, those or that set of vertices selected with its neighboring vertices. So here we'll select this edge here, and then we'll just weight hammer. And so you can see that the weight hammer is just a really incredibly fast tool to just smooth out that weighting on that. So then we can just go back into our uh, selected geometry. Again, we'll just right click, select influence on this. Let's make sure that we're in the paint mode at this point. And now see, we're back and we can just, you know, further tweak this if we want, or we could move to the next joint. So in this case, we could go here to the neck and take a look at, uh, you know, what we're working with here in the neck. So that's how I did the weighting for this entire character. Like I said, I will go into the paint weights tool, I'll make a selection, and I will manually adjust the weighting value. I will then use the brush tool to basically smooth out uh, the weighting around the joint uh, pivot areas, and then finally go in with the weight hammer to fix any uh, of the distortion issues. And that's my entire process for weighting. Now, the next thing I want to do is uh, go ahead and add the shorts. So uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to add these two, this upper thigh here, and uh, yeah, let's try this. Let's just do the two thighs and then let's shift select the shorts. Let's go to skin, let's go to bind skin. We'll do a smooth bind. Uh, this time instead of joint hierarchy, we're gonna do selected joints and we'll do the same thing. We'll hit apply. And so now we've added some weighting to these shorts. If I were to just go ahead and grab hold of this thigh here and as I start to move, uh, you can see that we start to get uh, some some weighting here. Uh, let's just go ahead and undo that and let's go ahead and just add another joint to that. I think I actually do want the hip to this. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select that hip, I'm going to shift select my shorts, and this time I'm gonna to go to edit smooth skin, and I'm going to add an influence. So here we will go through and we'll just do an option box on this. And for, uh, we aren't gonna use any geometry because we're not working with geometry. I want to go ahead and turn my weight locking on, so we're gonna lock weights on this, and my default weight's gonna be zero because I don't wanna destroy the weighting that's already done on these shorts. And so with that enabled, I'll hit apply, and so now we want to go ahead and adjust the weighting on the short. So with that selected, we'll go to skin. Uh, let's go ahead and just pull this uh, edit menu out here and let's go into our paint skin weights tool. Here are the hips that we added. You can see that they were locked. So let's go ahead and just unlock these guys. And let's just go ahead and just, you know, adjust a weight value here. And uh, we'll go ahead and just increase the size of our brush. And then I'll just kind of go through and just kind of paint a little bit of weight value here for the hips on this. So we'll go through. So what I'm showing here is how you can actually add an influence after the skin has taken place. So say you have a character that may have some antennas and things like that, uh, or some different types of um, you know joints that are not your typical biped joints. Uh, here, let's just go through and just remove some of the weighting on this here. And uh, that way you can go through and you can actually just add these influences after the fact. So it's pretty powerful uh, if you want to be able to tweak uh, any of your weights or something like that after the fact. So here we have that in place. Uh, we'll go ahead and just select this joint now and we'll start to just rotate. And that might work a little bit better here. Uh, in this case, let's just select this guy again. Uh, let's go back into our paint weights tool. Uh, let's go into select and let's make sure we have that vertice selected and let's weight hammer that guy. And right here, I'll tell you what, let's do this. In this case, let's be faster just to select these edges here and let's go ahead and make sure that we flood that with 100% value. So we'll go back into our paint mode here, uh, that edge is selected and we'll hit flood with a value of one here. And let's go into our select mode. Let's go back to this next ring here. And let's go ahead and just convert this guy to vertices. And let's take a look at the weight value onto that. We'll go to paint. Uh, let's make sure that we're at one here. We'll flood that. And let's go back to select our edges. Let's grab these guys. Uh, let's take a look at the weighting on these. We'll go back to paint here. And we need to flood this value as well. So in order to flood that value, I need to make sure I have vertices selected. So there we go on that. And one more thing here, we'll go back into our paint skin weights tool. Let's go to our edge, uh, select, oops, not joint. Let's go into edge mode here. Let's select here, this edge here. And let's just weight hammer this guy. So there we go. You can see how the weight hammer again, magic tool here, really fixing some stuff. And here, let's undo that. I want to have a little bit of a crease there. Let's grab this joint as well. And let's just rotate this guy up. So we rotate him up. Uh, let's go into our edge mode. Let's double select this, double click that edge loop. Let's go back into our paint weights tool, and then let's do the weight hammer on that. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure 
we're in paint mode and weight hammer so there we go we'll just kind of fix that other side there so let's select these two joints uh, let's go into our rotation value and just zero that out and so now we have our shorts are weighted okay so the last thing that I want to cover before I close out this video is how we can actually retarget some animation onto this human IK rig so we can further test out how our weighting and things are going to hold up also we have the ability to work with the control rig here so if I just come over here to the definitions tab you can see that we have this source if I hit this drop down I can just change this to control rig and that gives me an entire control rig to work with so I have a full uh, body IK rig uh, I can actually just select any one of these handles here and you can see that I have IK already applied so a complete character rig ready for animation right here without having to do anything I can actually go over here and turn this on to full body IK and now you can see that uh, as I start to work with these controls uh, all of the IK is going to be uh, basically distributed throughout the entire skeleton so this is here we've got this full body IK uh, to work with as well if we want so again we have this full control rig uh, that we can use to uh, animate this character and work with this character so we can create some you know interesting poses and we can use this to kind of test you know some of our, our weighting and things like that and then if we want to tweak anything we can easily just select the mesh and go back into our paint skin weights tool so uh, in this case I'm gonna take that source I'm gonna change that right back over here to my stance and so that takes us uh, back or basically turns off the control rig and now what I'm gonna do is actually apply some motion capture data so I can see some actual animation with this and there's a couple of, of really nice mocap examples that ship with my LT that we can use uh, just for uh, weight testing purposes. So what I'm going to do is uh, hit the space bar. I'm going to come over here to window and I'm going to go over to general editors and let's go to our samples visor and then I want to go to my mocap examples and then here is a few mocap examples. So let's just grab this run for instance. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say import uh, my file run1.ma and so uh, that's going to import that file in and we'll just close this we'll come back over here to our uh, outliner and then here in the scene we can see way over here that we actually have uh, a character and so if I just start to uh, here let's just change our start and end times here so we'll just change this here to one and uh, let's adjust our time slider here and so uh, if we kind of move our time slider uh, we can start to see that this character here has this run so he basically starts uh, you know right here around maybe frame 22 or so and we have this kind of run that's taking place and so what we're gonna do is retarget this animation right onto our character and it's really easy to do um, all we have to do is just come over here to our source we'll click the drop down and you can see that now we have the mocap example and what that's referring to uh, is this mocap example or this characterized uh, the setup that we just imported in so we'll go from source here we'll just turn this down here to mocap example and as soon as we do that you can see that our character just snaps to that same position uh, and then what we can do is just go ahead and just hit play and you can see that we now already just that quickly have some motion capture applied to our character as well so here we'll just go ahead and just focus this into view here and so we can use this to kind of you know in a way stress test our rig and just see you know how our weighting is taking place and things like that now if we actually have some animation that we purchased uh, from say Mixamo uh, and we actually have these in our unity assets uh, project now uh, we can actually take those FBX files we can import them the same as we did here with this mocap file uh, we can then take that character we would just come over here to our definition and here let's just go ahead and just pause this we would just come over here and we could just set up a new definition for for that imported FBX file basically go through the process of characterizing that for the human IK system uh, the same setup that you do when you're working with side of mechanism and then we can do the same thing for our source we just drop down and choose our new file here and we can actually apply that animation directly to our, our rig as well so we can see the animation that we'll be using our game inside of uh, unity we can actually see that same animation uh, retargeted here inside of uh, my LT as well and we can get a, a really good idea of what that's going to look like on our character and we can actually uh, within this my LT environment we could go through and just you know interactively paint weights and things like that just to make sure that our deformations are going to be uh, as, as, as good as possible so to finish this up we'll go ahead and export to unity so I'm gonna take my source I'm gonna put this back to stance and I will go ahead and just select my group here and hit F to focus that and so the next thing I'll do is I'll just select my joints and I will shift select uh, my objects here so I've got these items selected and then I'm just going to do uh, send to unity and first I would need to set my project and then I'll uh, send this selection here to unity so here we are in unity and Earl has been sent to the unity project underneath rig I can actually change this animation type here to humanoid and I'll go ahead and click the configure here we won't save this scene and we'll apply these settings 
And so if we kind of take a look, you can see that the rig that we created using the human IK inside of uh, my LT is already properly configured uh, to meet the, the mechanism minimum requirements. So now we'll just go ahead and just click done here. And um, I'm actually working with the, uh, the Unity uh, Mechanum demo project. And so uh, if we just go ahead and just take a look at some of these animations they have here, for instance, here is a jump animation. We'll take a look at the animation for this. And uh, I'll go ahead and just hit play on this. And you can see that um, I just simply uh, just did a drag and drop of Earl here into this preview window so that I could actually see uh, that animation being retargeted to the character I created. So here you can see that uh, we have the... Um, human IK skeleton setup and we have our skinning and things like that all done in my LT uh, did a simple uh, send to unity command uh, and now here is the uh, same character just retargeted and ready for uh, mechanism animation